So he said, "Is he said he's going on a boat?" And I said, "I don't mess with boats it's too much with the water." And it oh, this sure, I'll address it. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and we're going to start today by saying yes, I won the Microsoft MVP for Microsoft Intune uh, this year, and I'm just shocked, and it's amazing, and um, super pumped about it. I'm glad that all this content is making its way out there. You're all finding it helpful to Microsoft. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, and uh, to all the comments and feedback I got about this, very kind. Thank you. I appreciate it. Are we finishing the jokes? No. Andrew Taylor reached out to me and uh, liked the autopilot script I did for fixing the, you know, the hole that they had, um, but kind of suggested instead of putting uh, client secrets and client IDs and client secrets in the PowerShell plain text, we shift to webhooks. And that's something I've been asked about a lot. So he did a great write up. I'm going to put it below. But of course, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to set that up with Azure Automation. And uh, we'll get that going. So our scripts will be a little more secure. And there'll definitely be some performance gains as well. That was a lot. How'd we do? Oh, boats. Yeah, I would never get on a boat. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna go to the whiteboard. Okay, so this is generally how we interact with the uh, with anything Azure with PowerShell scripts. We have a PowerShell script that we push to the device, and in order to interact with Azure, whether that's Intune or Entra or Autopilot, it contains the client ID and the client secret within the script. The problem is the script will end up on the device, um, even though it shouldn't be exposed to users the way we push it through Intune, there's always that chance. And these do have permissions. Um, and some of the permissions can get pretty invasive, basically because they're doing things, posting devices, deleting devices, reading user data. So what's the point and what do we move to and how does that work? Okay, so basically in the new model, um, you're gonna have two scripts. You're gonna have the client script that goes to the PC, probably pushed from Intune, um, and it's gonna communicate via what's called a webhook. The webhook basically says, hey, um, go to this link, <laughs> go up here in Azure somewhere and find the PowerShell script that we want you to run. And it computes the logic up there. And that is actually what holds the client ID and client secret. So, they don't end up on the device. Um, so in order to do this, we're gonna start by setting up an Azure Automation account, and then we'll move into running the script up there. Um, so yeah, let's get to that. So we're going to log in to our portal.azure.com, and you do need an active subscription for this. And what we're gonna do um, is we are gonna search for automation and you can see automation accounts is what we're looking for. We're gonna go ahead and create one. Like anything else, you're gonna need a resource group. Um, I'm gonna leave mine as resource group Rubik's. That's fine. You need a name for the account. So I'm gonna call it um, Intune Automation. And you pick your region that you're comfortable with. Uh, system assigned or user assigned. So that's kind of the whole thing. So we're gonna leave that. Uh, I'm gonna leave this as public access, pretty much the defaults, right? And you can obviously customize this, but we just wanna get the automation account. Um, uh, I'm gonna put a separate link below so you can see another uh, article that's been written up about that. So we just wanna create the automation account. Validation passed, you can see we're submitting to deployment and it is in progress. Waiting for an Azure resource is a good time to enjoy a Dunkin' Donuts cold brew. Dunkin' Donuts, cold, can you imagine if I started getting sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts? We're not, we're not there yet, but okay, the deployment is complete. Let's go to the resource. What we need to do next is we have to add modules to this, um, basically, so it can do things, right? And, and we wanted to interact with the Microsoft Graph. So we're gonna click modules here. And there's a whole you know, bunch of things here. I'm gonna actually search for graph, and see if that pops up. No, Microsoft, I forgot to click browse gallery. My bad. Oh, okay, so we're gonna do Microsoft 
Graph. There we go, Microsoft Graph Authentication Module. So we click that. Obviously this has everything we need to connect to the graph and invoke requests, right? So this is kind of everything the module comes with. It's kind of like a PowerShell module. We're gonna select that and um, runtime version. We're gonna do the recommended and we are going to import. Well, it should show up here um, in a few minutes. There we go. So it's showing up as importing and we will wait until it's imported. All right, so our modules there, we're all set. What we need is we have to manage the identity here, right? And, and that's why we chose system in the beginning, right? This is a system managed identity and um, we need to permission it essentially. Um, we have to permission it uh, to basically do the tasks we need it to do. So in this case, because this is autopilot registration, uh, we wanted the device management service config permissions to it. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna open the entry portal. And just so you can see here, this is our object principle. So I am gonna copy this because that's gonna be the identity, just like any other identity in an Azure uh, application. So enterprise applications, I'm gonna search Oh, nope, I'm actually gonna search here. All right, so we have the uh, app here and uh, from the automation account. And you'll notice if we check on permissions, here, let's click on it. Um, you can see permissions, but you can't add any here. And the reason is because this is a managed uh, account, you can't do it from here. So we have to do this from PowerShell. Um, so let's go ahead and open that up. All right, so we're gonna open PowerShell up. Okay, we're gonna need our tenant ID. And we're gonna need our managed identity. And these are all from um, a script I recommend using. I'll throw it in the link below as well from another MVP. So for permissions, it's pretty much gonna be this array. What we need uh, to do this, which is device management service config read write all. And that's really all we need for this. And this is where you would add in additional permissions uh, as you need them. Okay, so now we'll walk through what we have to do. Make sure you have the Microsoft Graph uh, module installed. Um, so just so you know here, it would be um, it would be Microsoft so get module, get installed module. So it would be Microsoft graph dot authentication and applications. Those are the two, or if you just have Microsoft dot graph, you're, you're good to go. So. I'm going to go ahead and import them. Import module Microsoft Graph applications. And I'm going to also do authentication. Okay. Now with those, we can connect MG Graph. Tenant ID is tenant ID. And you sign in. Yep, that's the wrong tenant. All right, there we go. So a few more variables here and then we'll run them. Identity service principal equals get mg Get MG should be service principal. Filter is display name equals managed identity. And that should do it. Okay, so next we need the, uh, we actually need a graph app ID. Um, 
So we need an app ID that's static for this. This is just to have something to reference when we're doing the permissions. We did this, um, we did this last time with the app usage thing. Basically, you just need a static reference, essentially. Okay, so once we have the graph ID, we can then go ahead and get the graph service principle. So graph service principle, and that will equal get mg service principle filter app ID equals graph app ID. Yeah, so I just wanted to show you real quick that that is basically the representation of the Microsoft graph. So that's all that app ID is, right? Um, okay, so let's go ahead and we have all that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the roles, right? So we're gonna say app roles are equal to the graph service principle dot app roles where the object permissions uh, where the object sorry it's value in permissions uh, I forgot the hyphen value in permissions and allowed member types contains application all right let's go ahead and run this so far filer uh that should be filter i can't uh spell apparently all right so we got what we needed now what we have to do though is we have to go ahead and do our uh we have to do role assignment right so we basically have to add our um we have to add the permissions essentially for this for this role so this is going to be for each app role for each app role in app roles app role assignment equals we're gonna do a code block here uh let me actually uh no, we'll leave that equals principal id equals the identity service principal dot id resource id equals the graph service principal dot id and now finally the actual app role id is the this particular role dot id and then what we do at that point is we say new mg service principal role assignment uh that's gonna actually be role assignment and we're gonna say the service principal id is the app role assignment dot rinse app role assignment yes app role assignment dot principal id body parameter is the app role app role assignment and we'll do verbose let's go ahead spin to win okay insufficient privileges okay so that worked um the thing that was missing it turned out was i didn't have the scope for app role assignment read write all when you connect to graph so you do have to add that um Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time like we did. Okay, let's check to see if it worked. Uh, let's go back here and we will go to Entra and 
Come on, sign me up. You know I'm signed in. We will go to Enterprise Applications and Intune Automation. Uh, it should be everything. Intune Automation. So this is our account. And now we go to Permissions. Okay. Um, service Device Management. Admin Consents. This management service config, read, write all. Yeah, I went a little crazy. I accidentally. Um, <laughs> read and write Microsoft terms, device management, service config, read, write all. Yeah, so I just kept looping through testing it, but I ended up adding a little bit of everything here. So that's fine. Okay, so with it permissioned correctly, uh, we can go ahead and look for run books. So what we're going to do is we are going to create, we're going to take our PowerShell script and add it to a run book. So we're going to say, create a run book. We are going to say auto autopilot. The run book type is going to be PowerShell. The runtime version is going to be 7.2. And this will automatically add Windows PCs to Autopilot. We don't need the tag. We're just going to go ahead and create that run book. All right, so if we go back to the whiteboard for a minute, basically what the PowerShell script is going to do that is sent to the client is going to... So if the logic is up here, right? So think about up here is where we're going to post to Autopilot. Right? So what do we have to give this? Right? So right there, we're going to need the serial number, hardware hash, and if we want the group tag. Okay? So that's what we have to pass that. You know, these are all variables we have to send up here. So we're going to get them using this script and send them to the webhook. We're just going to pass the parameter through and say, hey, uh, PowerShell running up here in Azure, here's your information so that you can go do the thing. So that's really what this has to do. So let's let's talk about this. So auto autopilot. OK, so you can uh, copy and paste your own thing, do it up there, whatever the deal is. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw that up there. OK, so this is our script um, and it's basically just been modified. Uh, instead of basically instead of getting the data from the device, we're getting it from what comes in of the web hook, right? So this is what we're going to get on that. Think about that up arrow. But the logic is the same, right? So let's go ahead and save that. OK, and we're going to go ahead and publish that. So what we're going to do now is we need a webhook, right? So we're going to add a webhook. Um, we're going to create a new one. And the webhook will be known. Uh, it'll be run auto autopilot. And this is the URL that pokes it. So this is a one time thing, the URL. You're going to want to grab that now. Uh, make sure it's copied. Kind of like the secret, right? You can't you can't get it later. Um, so that's what's going to be embedded here. So we're going to go ahead and create that. So basically that webhook is how the information is being passed up. So one thing I do want to point out, though, because I said you can do this with clients and secrets and you can. But this automation um, account has an identity. So remember, if we go back to Entra and we go look at here, let me go back to applications. Let's see if we can pull this up. Oh, did I select the wrong thing? Let's copy that. So it, it's pretty much an identity, right? And it is the thing that has these permissions. So it's going to be able to do this without a client secret, right? So it's got everything it needs here to do my Intune work um, for me. So I don't need a client and a secret, right? That's all part of the webhook. So now all that's left to do because we have the run book, 
which is auto autopilot. And if we wanted to view, that's the actual, um, this is the actual PowerShell script that's going to run as the run book. So all that's left to do now is create something to trigger it. So in the, uh, in the post below, you could see it as a remediation. I'm just going to show you how to push it out instead of what we were doing before. So let me go ahead and let's go to the desktop and let's look at our autopilot register file. Okay, which was <clears throat> this was the old version, right? So now we don't need to do any of this. This is all being taken care of by the, the run book. So all we need to do now, so here, I'm going to scrap this and I'm going to scrap this. So all we need now is these variables and we got to just put them in the JSON. So I'm getting the hardware info and I have the group tag. Okay. I got my web hook. I'm going to go ahead and copy that whole thing. Uh, definitely want to put that in quotes. Okay. And now we just create the webhook data. Webhook data. And this is what will get passed through. Serial number equals serial number. Hardware ID equals hardware ID group tag equals group tag the body will be webhook data and we will oh actually sorry body equals webhook data convert to JSON and then we just invoke the request invoke the web request method posts and you don't need permissions for this this is the point of the the webhook body is body and use basic parsing so basically no one's going to have permissions to do anything all this webhook is good for is waiting to accept this data to run a, a script and this is all you have to push Hopefully that made sense. We kind of went over a little, you know, auto, uh, Azure automation, a little webhook 101, um, the run books, it bounced a little bit all over the place here, but I think we ended in a good spot and hopefully you see the basic flow. So now if you do have to permission something around with PowerShell, we can just do it. And, uh, you know, I think what we'll do next time is we'll deep dive into if we do have to use clients and secrets and putting them in, in like key vaults and stuff. So we will get to that. Um, until then, we'll be seeing you.